I'm Jasper Williams. I am pastor emeritus of Salem Bible Church. My son is in ministry with me and my son is the senior pastor of our church. Uh, for those of you who may not know me, I am a native of Memphis, Tennessee. The way I like to put it, I am a Mississippian by heredity. I'm a Tennessean by birth. I'm a Georgian by adoption. My parents were from the state of Mississippi as was the parents of Aretha Franklin. Uh, it is because of that heritage in our parenthoods that our paths came together and I'm in the position that I'm in in terms of delivering the eulogy on next Friday. Um, I'm pastor emeritus here. My son is senior pastor of the church and that's very key to us. I'm preparing to go to Detroit and I'm looking forward to representing myself, number one, to representing our church here in Atlanta as well as in Lithonia, and also most especially to represent our city. I'm hoping, trusting, and praying that I'll be able to do what is expected of me. And for those of you who are sitting in TV land and radio land or wherever it is that you are, and you're wondering what you can do to participate in all of this, I ask you as humbly as I can, when you go down on your knees in prayer, that you will remember me in this hour. I think that will service the opening for me and whatever questions you all feel free to ask, I'll do my best to answer. So Williams, much like your son asked you, how does one prepare for the last word of Aretha Franklin? Well, that's been the challenge. That's a great question. No wonder you're where you are. You... I listen to your son. <laughs> That's been the challenge because there are so many uh, intricacies out there and they're going in varied ways. And she sort of indicated that she felt I would do that. And for whatever reasons, she trusted that I would do it and hopefully I would be able to rise to what her expectations were. Uh, in telling you how I'm going to go about preparing it, I'm gonna take the life of Aretha. I'm going to take the word of God I'm going to take society as it is in present with us now and do my best to mesh all of that into hopefully what a eulogy ought to be. So how did this all come about for you? Well, I was privileged to preach her father's funeral back in August. Actually, it was August the 11th in 1984. Her father was shot in 1979 and stayed in a coma for five years. And when he died, Jesse Jackson, if you can recall, was the presidential candidate for the Democratic Party at that time and they had asked that he would do the funeral. And then uh, another great preacher at that time was Dr. C.A.W. Clark. They had asked that he would do the funeral. And then Aretha said, are these the kinds of preachers that dad would want to preach his funeral? And then they called me and asked me if I would do it, and I did. And so here we are again, ironically, 34 years later, still in the month of August. That's another thing that strikes me as being providential. Still in the month of August, 34 years later, I've been asked by her again to do her eulogy. Explain that call, if you could. What, when, I, when you said you got the call again 34 years later, so share more details with us about the call that you received and how Aretha wished that you do the eulogy. Okay, Aretha was in hospice uh, for, I don't know how long she was in hospice, but she, I uh, had her people to call me before she transpired. And they asked if I would do the eulogy. And uh, knowing that she had not transpired, I told them to tell her that I would be glad to do whatever it is that she wanted me to do if I should be the longest liver. 
and that if she wanted me to sing a song, if she wanted me to preside, if she wanted me to give remarks, all of that would be fine with me. And then, of course, they said, stop right there. She wants you to do the eulogy. I said, well, then you tell her, rest assured, if I'm the longest liver, I'll do that and carry out her wishes as she desires. Can you share some insight about what she will be talking about? I'm still trying to get that. And are you a Christian? Yes, sir. Would you pray for me too, please? Of course. Do that, and I'm sure I'll come up with the right approach. That's what I'm thinking, hoping, and trusting I'll be able to do. Even for someone of your experience, uh, your legend in the, in the black Baptist tradition, this is a challenge for you? You're still standing in the question of what you'll say? Oh, yes. I'm, I'm 75 years of age. And uh, in the second Sunday in August of this year, I've been preaching for 68 years. And come the second Sunday in November of this year, I've been pastoring this church for 55 years. And the one thing I've learned is that you never are to be so certain and assured of yourself in a pulpit when it comes down to doing anything that represents God. So when you ask me in awe that I'm still struggling, I will be struggling until I am finished preaching that funeral. That's the way it is with me. Does it come to you, sir? Or does it kind of show up in your spirit? No, it won't just come to me. You, you show me a preacher who everything comes to them and that's what they preached and you'll show me no preacher. It doesn't come, you got to study. You got to know what you are about. The difficulty with what I'm faced with is here is an icon. You know, a, a, a lady who had a whole lot of different aspects about it. And I already feel insignificant being called upon to do it. But uh, with God and hopefully with my church praying for me and even you, people who are looking and watching and listening, and even you, dear people, who brought your cameras and are questioning and asking me, I think if all of us pray, the Lord will meet us there. What does the word eulogy mean to you? Eulogy? The word eulogy, you take the last part of it. Logi comes from the word in the Greek vernacular, logos. And the word logos means word. So then the prefix eu, E-U in the Greek, translates good. So when you mesh it all together, you get eulogy, which simply means a good word about the one who died. Uh, real quick, uh, what about her legacy inspired you the most? Well, that's, really, that's Reverend Franklin's daughter. Reverend Franklin was the icon, guru, preacher of my whole life. He mentored me. Um, Reverend Franklin and my uncle lived almost side by side. They played checkers every day together. And so our heritage has been there all along. I mean, my uncle Buddy was his name, Reverend A.R. Williams of Memphis, Tennessee. That was that friendship. And you know, there are some things about friendship, nothing breaks. And here I am because of the coming together of the heritage of Aretha and my family, that I stand on this end of her going home. Can you explain more about your relationship with Aretha and your last conversation with her? When you say my, re my relationship with her, I, I was privileged in 1987, I think it was, when she did the album One Lord, One Faith, One Baptism, where Amazing Grace was the authored best song on there. I did one of those songs with her. She called and asked that I would narrate the song. And I narrated that song, Pressing On. And she was supposed to be here in Atlanta in November of 2017 at the Fox Theater. And she called me, Jasper, I'm coming to your city and I want you to join me on the stage and let's do that thing, pressing on. I said, Aretha, I'd be glad to do that. 
Well, she didn't come. I didn't know why, but shortly afterwards, she called me again. And she told me, you know I didn't make it. The reason why I didn't make it, that promoter down there wasn't doing right, Jasper. Catch me another time and we'll do that thing, I promise you. I said, okay, Aretha, whenever you say that you will want me to do that, I'll be privileged, honored, and pleased. And that was your last conversation with her back then? No, that wasn't the last conversation back then. That was the last conversation dealing with her coming to Atlanta in November of 2017. Any details about your last conversation with her? The last conversation that she had with me was a very private conversation, and I would not deceive her by sharing that with you or anyone. Could you speak about her voice, her significance in the black church? You know, it's a soul singer, but she was a great gospel vocalist as well, was she not? Yes. And uh, soul, soul music, you know. When we talk about soul music, what is soul music? As I see soul music, and she's the queen of soul, gospel, jazz, pop, rock, all meshed into a rhythm of blues provides for us soul music. And because of all of that being in one, as I see it, God must be in it somewhere. That's the best I can tell you on that, man. What's your favorite Aretha song in your mind? Ain't no way. I knew you had to ask that. <laughs> you got to be the best one in here. Thank you for that question. Ain't no way. And, and the reason why that's my best one is because so many times in my life, and I know those of you who are watching and listening to me now, so many times in your lives you have come up in situations, succumbed by circumstances where you too felt, ain't no way. And even though she was talking about a love situation, just those words makes it more generic and more foundational for me to be able to see God in all of this, ain't no way, but he is the way. Yes, sir. Brother Williams, uh, you may have covered this before I walked in. Yes, sir. What, when was the first time you met uh, Aretha? What was her age and what, and what were you doing in your ministry at that point? Um, the first time that I met Aretha was, I was about 16, 17 years old something like that in terms of just really other than that we just knew of each other but our fathers and all that were together but I met her about that time she was a year older than I and from that point on it's just been there good question you were preaching then too, right? oh yes I started preaching in 1950 you were before I was born. well that show you how old I am Shows you how old I am too. I can see how old you are. <laughs> <laughs> Just teasing with you, man. <laughs> you know, preacher, you talked about her. You talked about her father, but I mean, you meant, had many accolades yourself. People call you the quintessential pulpit pastor, the pastor among pastors. What is your legacy? Who who was Jasper Williams in terms of this pantheon of Black Baptist preachers? Well, I like to think in terms of myself as having been the recipient of the mantle. Uh, there's a biblical story about Elijah the prophet and Elisha was a prophet who was an understudy to Elijah and he wanted to know a lot of things about the prophecy and all. And Elijah said to Elisha, if you see me when I go then the anointing will fall on you. And the Bible says that Elijah was caught up on a chariot and took the mantle and threw it back and Elisha caught the mantle, signifying that the anointing that had been on Elijah, the great prophet, had fallen on his understudy, Elisha, because he received the mantle. That's the way I perceive and think of myself as it relates to the late Dr. C.L. Franklin. He was the prophet, he was the guru, he was 
the greatest preacher of the 20th century. Okay? And when I was privileged to preach his funeral, I internalized that as being the recipient of the mantle that he had, that the same anointing and the same mantle that had blessed and anointed his ministry somehow fell on me. And, and I'm humbled, pleased, and proud. Um, one last question. What do you want people to know about Luther Franklin after everything has been said at the end of this funeral? I want everybody to know that Aretha will forever be internalized and she should be internalized in all of our minds, our hearts, because in some shape, form, or fashion, she touched all of us. The only reason why we have concerns about Aretha now is because of what she did in her songs that reached all of us. So from soul to soul, I see this. I am a spirit, I have a soul, I live in my body. That's the trichotomy of mankind. And I see that most expressed in the life and the legacy of which Aretha lived and the things that she tried to do. Thank you, sir. Thank you all. Thank you. All right, I appreciate it. See you all, hopefully. On these same kinds of situations, however you know it may not be, right? Mm -hmm. <laughs> Love you all. Take care of yourself.